Hello, uh, welcome to the first Bread Garden Market Wine and Cheese Club YouTube videos, kind of a virtual class to go along with the wine club. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing these monthly for the foreseeable future. Uh, this is the specific video for the second wine club, the Wine Cash. Uh, this is the club, uh, I'm excited about all three, but this is the club I would probably find most interesting if I was going to join uh, a wine club. Uh, the reason being that this particular club is kind of focused on uniqueness, value. Um, it's basically based off of what really good sommeliers do in restaurants. So a good sommelier won't necessarily sell you the most expensive bottle of wine. What they want to do is create an experience, find something unique, something the customer probably hasn't ever tried before or has ever heard of before but something that will go along with the meal really well and offer that customer a unique experience to go along with their food um, so that's what the wine cash is kind of um, based off of and that really kind of explores um, and coincides with my own wine history um, my wine passion comes from things that are kind of very unique, things I've never heard of before, discovery and exploration. And the wine cache is about, if nothing else, uniqueness and exploration. So let's dive into the first bottle. So the very first wine we're talking about, and oh, by the way, the theme for this month is, which all of you already know, California Dreaming. So we're focusing on California wines, but not necessarily the California wines people are most familiar with. The first wine we're actually going to taste or tackle, or that's part of your little wine cache, is the Botkin 2016 Dry Muscat. Um, I chose this wine for a lot of reasons. Um, first and foremost, it fits that unusual profile. Muscat, which most of the world is familiar with, is typically used for sweet dessert wines. Muscat Bon de Venise is a very, very famous dessert wine out of the Rhone Valley. Um, and almost everybody is familiar with Moscato, whether it be Moscato de Asti or Moscato from another wine region or other country. Um, same grape, the Italians call it Moscato. So primarily used for nothing but sweet wines. Uh, this happens to be a dry version of Muscat, uh, which is delicious. I'll get into the actual characteristics of the wine here in a second. Um, the other reason why I chose this wine is I love everything that they do. Uh, this was actually founded in 2011, this winery, by a gentleman named Chris Christensen. Christensen, excuse me. Um, and Chris is actually a native of Iowa. So kind of a level of kind of uniqueness and coolness um, being that we all live here in Iowa as well. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you could tell, is a huge fan of Shakespeare. Uh, Bakken is an old Elizabethan term for usually a sharp object, like a dagger. Uh, if you see the little cross here, uh, and the cross, it's into the breach. Um, and Chris is a big fan of Henry V, in particular that very famous speech um, from Henry V into, uh, from Saint, the St. Saint Crispin Day speech, uh, into the breach once more, dear friends. Um, in fact, their motto at the winery is, we few, we happy few. So the unique label, uh, the different kind of Elizabethan terms are not a coincidence. Uh, Chris is a huge fan of Shakespeare and in particular, Henry V. Uh, Chris and his partner make wines, um, all over the board. Uh, they make 15 different varietals. Um, they were the first winery in the United States to make a sparkling Sauvignon Blanc, which I highly encourage you to try. It's super delicious and really unique and really cool. It has some of those Sauvignon Blanc characteristics, but in bubbly form um, and makes for like a really dry, crisp, fresh, sparkling wine. Uh, but in particular, we're going to talk about the Muscat. Uh, the Muscat is dry, it's nutty, it's a little fruity, uh, so even though it's fermented dry, so it has a little bit of that typical muscat fruitiness. Um, it's got a little bit of woodsiness to it as well, um, but it's absolutely delicious. Uh, it's from Lake County, 
So the winery itself is located in Sonoma, but Chris is sourcing the grapes from Lake County, which is in Northern California. Uh, a really fantastic little wine region that is starting to gain some notoriety now, but which most people don't pay attention to and know about. So good value if you see a Cabernet or a white wine from Lake County or the North Coast of California, you're probably getting really, really good value. But the Muscat, like I said, dry, nutty, little bit of fruitiness, little bit of woodsiness. It is a fantastic food wine. You could pair this with anything from um, oysters, shrimp. It actually goes really well uh, with Asian cuisine. In particular, I'm thinking about like slightly spicy, maybe Szechuan or Cantonese. Um, it goes really well with Thai food. Um, and then slightly heavier fish. It would go excellent with like cod or fried cod. Um, you want to stay on the lighter side, you know, things like tuna, salmon, might be a little too big for this particular wine, but any other kind of seafood, any kind of Asian cuisine, um, for the most part, it is a fantastic pairing. It is a really cool wine, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. We just finished with the Batkin Dry Muscat. Uh, next, we're switching over to another very unique wine, uh, especially, for, especially in California, the Emmanuel Trace Carignan. Carignan is not necessarily considered a unusual or rare grape uh, outside of California. It is very prevalent in France, uh, particularly southern France. Uh, they use it mostly as a blending grape, but you can get 100% um, Carignan varietals in certain parts of France. And it's also quite prevalent in Spain uh, in particular in Priorat, usually in Priorat it's also used as a blending grape. But to get 100% Carignan coming at it from California is, um, is pretty unique, is very unusual. You don't see a lot of 100% Carignan in the U.S. period. Um, the wine does have a little bit of age to it. It's 2011. Uh, it is drinking superbly right now. Um, so this is a wine that has held up quite well being a nine-year-old wine. Um, if you kind of you can kind of swish it, but before you swish and smell, kind of tip the wine a little bit. Notice the color. Uh, you can tell this wine has some age on it. Looking at the rim, you start to get more of a brick orangish color. Um, and that usually is indicative of age in the wine. Uh, this particular wine and winery was founded by a gentleman named Chris Keller. Chris Keller is from Indiana. So our first two wines in the Wine Cash Club are both natives of the Midwest. Um, and he explores with a lot of different cool varietals that you don't typically find in California. He does his Carignan, of course. He also does 100% Grenache. He does a wine that's 100% Tempranillo. So again, um, a lot of Rhone varietals, a lot of Southern French varietals, a lot of Spanish varietals, which are some of the wines that heavily influenced Chris's love of wine. He was a sommelier before he became a winemaker, so it kind of very much fits with the theme of this particular uh, club, the Wine Cache. And he's able to mess around with these grapes and kind of explore these different varietals. Uh, because of where he's sourcing his grapes from and where the winery is located. So basically, Emmanuel Trace, we're talking specifically about Santa Ynez. Santa Ynez is an AVA in South Central California, in particular in Santa Barbara. So what do I mean by AVA? AVA simply stands for American Viticultural Area. So AVA is basically a designated wine growing region that has unique climate, unique soil and topography that makes the wines from that particular region uh, unique. So Napa Valley is an AVA. Within Napa Valley, Calistoga, Oakville, Stags Leap, Coombsville are all AVAs within Napa. But you get AVAs all up and down the coast of California. So we're talking Santa Barbara, as the broader AVA, and if you think about concentric circles here, within Santa Barbara you have about seven, I believe, don't come at me if it's six or eight, it's about seven AVAs within 
the larger region of Santa Barbara, and the biggest of those subregions is Santa Ynez. What makes Santa Ynez so unique is the varying climates. So Santa Ynez, if you're on the western part of Santa Ynez, you're getting cooler weather, and they grow a lot of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay there. As you move further east, it gets quite warmer. So in the eastern part of Santa Ynez, where Emmanuel Trace is sourcing his fruit from and growing some of his fruit, you get a lot of Rhone varietals, Carignan, Tempranillo, Syrah, Grenache, which love the warmer weather. Some great Zinfandel that's grown in the eastern part of Santa Ynez as well. So Chris is able to make these cool, unique wines because of the small area he is working with in the eastern part of Santa Ynez, which is perfect for growing the wine, the Rhone and Spanish varietals that he loves so much. So if we're gonna taste this quick, we talked a little bit about the color. Uh, swish your wine a little bit to aerate it. Give it a little smell. So a little spicy, a little earthy. Um, it's got a little almost, not in a bad way, but slight dankiness to it, almost like um, a muskiness. But again, not in a bad way. Um, it is a wine that when you kind of smell it, you're like, oh, this does have a little bit of age to it. I'm getting some secondary characteristics. But the important thing is it still has its fruit. Um, when you're drinking aged wines and the fruit is completely gone, that's a bad sign. You want to bring that bottle back to your retailer or dump it out. You don't want to drink it. Um, the sign of a good wine, the sign of a good wine that'll age well is the tannins will dissipate, it'll become softer, you'll get more secondary correct characteristics, and some of the fruit will dissipate over time, but it's still there. Um, and then along with that, you have some of that spice. This wine still has a little bit of nice brightness to it. Um, let's taste it a little bit here. So it kind of Switching it around my mouth just to get all the characteristics, just to kind of coat. The tannins are there, but super soft. Um, so they have dissipated quite a bit. Like, the, like on the nose, I get some bright red fruit. Um, I do get a little bit of spice. Um, a nice long finish for a wine that has nine years of age to it. So super well made, really well balanced, very unique but also very Californian. Um, so this fits perfectly into our California Dreamin' Wine Cash Wine Club, um, both for its uniqueness, for how well it's made, and for the value it offers. So enjoy this now. It's something that'll last another couple years if you want to hold it, but it's really something you should drink now over the next year or two. You could pair it with some roasted leg of lamb, um, maybe some skirt steak, um, maybe a nice kind of uh, barbecue would be excellent. Like I'm thinking like pulled pork or ribs, it'd be perfect with barbecued ribs. Um, so enjoy, however you want to do it, by itself or with food, and I'm sure you'll be extremely happy with the wine. Our last wine, our third wine, is not here right now. Um, for a number of reasons, our director Gil will kind of slide it in here when the wine comes in on Tuesday. Uh, I had a different wine chosen originally for this third wine in the Wine Cash Club that was called Ultraviolet. Um, and then I had an unexpected visit from a wine vendor who gave me a different, who gave me a wine called Arania, uh, and specifically the Arania Cabernet Sauvignon. And myself and Deb were so blown away with this wine, uh, especially price to value wise, that I immediately decided this was the third wine that needs to be in this particular month of this particular wine club. And so I switched out the Ultraviolet for the Urania Cab, uh, which is currently not here. Um, the vendor was nice enough to leave the bottle with us and I promptly brought that home and had it with some steak with my wife and it did not last the night. Um, so I meant to leave some for the actual filming of this and uh, 
yeah, my love of wine got the better of me once again. Um, the Arania is absolutely delicious. It has a fantastic pedigree. It's actually made um, by Aaron Pitt and Kyle Mizuno, and it's the second winery, or the second wine, I should say, of Blackbird. Uh, Blackbird is an amazing, amazing wine that comes out of Oak Knoll, so in Napa, California, and they make two or three different Cabernet or Cabernet-based blends out of there, but all very expensive, and they wanted to make a wine that was kind of more affordable, but also kept the high standards of quality. So they founded Arania Winery. The Arania wine, the Cabernet, is not coming the grapes, are not coming from Napa, they're not coming from the Oak Knoll District, instead they come from the north coast of California, which, as I've mentioned previously in other videos, is, and I believe in this one, where you get some really, really good value for Cabernet in particular, sometimes Chardonnay. And the grapes that are going into the Arania wine are from Lake County, uh, specifically the north coast of California, or the north coast AVA, and from a smaller area within the north coast called Red Hills, uh, which gets an unusually high amount of heat, uh, which is perfect for Cabernet Sauvignon. And again, this wine is just absolutely delicious. Dark fruit, spice, cedar, a little bit of woodsy oak, oaky notes, but really well integrated into the wine. You're not getting a ton of like spoofulated vanilla. There's no manipulation to this wine whatsoever. I think it retails for about $13.99, and I have not had a Cabernet Sauvignon at $13.99 this good in quite a while. Um, so you're really getting a treat with this wine. Uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Again, high, high pedigree, second wine of Blackbird Vineyards, and just killer stuff. Um, if you wanted to pair it with something, I would do maybe like a nice hamburger, would go really well with the meatloaf, um, a slightly less fatty steak. I wouldn't do it with a ribeye per se, but certainly a filet or a skirt steak or something along those lines. But I think this wine drinks beautifully by itself. Um, killer stuff. I could go on talking about this wine and raving about it for the next 20 minutes, but I see Gil's eyes getting a little heavy at this point. So we'll cut it off there, and I hope you enjoy the wine as much as I did.